We're here with Robert Smazny of Smazny Cellars, based out of Grandview, Washington, at his Woodenville Taste Room. His uh, new release this weekend for the St. Patrick's or St. Nicholas weekend here in Woodenville. Uh, Robert, can you tell us a little bit about the three wines that you released? Yeah, we had uh, some new releases uh, to my wine club. Um, the first one was a 2007 Upland Syrah. Um, Upland Vineyard is a vineyard you know that I'm using a lot uh, in my wines. Um, 2007. It's a wine that I actually kept back for a while and never released, and then released it out to the wine club. Um, the other one's the 2008 Old Vine Cabernet Sauvignon. It's uh, from the Upland Vineyard again, uh, the Alex family. Uh, I love that Old Vine block. It's, uh, you know, for those people not familiar with the Yakima Valley area, can you tell us a little bit about where Upland Vineyard is and and kind of may, maybe what makes the terroir that vineyard so so desirable? Yeah, so I've been working with the Upland Vineyard for a long time in my winemaking career. Um, it's the big ridge line that runs east-west in the Yakima Valley, basically between Granger and Sunnyside. Um, it's high elevation in the Yakima Valley. Um, it's the new ABA, Snipes Mountain. Um, the Upland Vineyard, uh, the original plantings are there from BF Bridgman from 1917. And uh, the Newhouse family took that vineyard over in uh, mid-70s. Okay. So, so it's high elevation, so typically good acids and... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very warm site, uh, unique soil profile, a um, lot of rock, a uh, very warm site for the Acma Valley. Mm -hmm. um, I love the flavor profile that actually develops from that site. And, uh, I make a lot of uh, single vineyard wines from there. 10 or 11. So. Do you have specific blocks that are earmarked for you or how does oh, that work? definitely, yeah. Okay. Everything's uh, earmarked for me. Certain rows within a block. Uh, I believe it's about an 800 acre vineyard now. Um, so of course I'm only using a very small portion of that vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very unique and you know it's a place that I've put a lot of effort into. So how many cases of the Syrah and the Cab are you did you make for this vintage, this release? Um, Syrah and the Cab were both around 100 cases each. Okay. Uh, mainly designated for a wine club and a little bit of sales out of tasting room. Mm -hmm. And those are retail for how much? Um, Syrah 25, the Old Vine Cabernet 45. Okay. And they can get those at your website? Website in, in both my tasting rooms in Woodenville or in uh, Kinoa. Okay, so tell us a little bit, we, we heard about the Syrah, tell us a little bit more about the Cab. Um, the Cabernet is, uh, I've been making the Old Vine Cabernet since 2006. Um, it's a very unique uh, old block, it was planted in uh, 1973. Um, it's, you know, one of the oldest blocks of Cabernet in the state. Uh, big, massive, gnarly vines, naturally crops really low, uh, about 1.8, 2 tons to the acre. What I love about this block, and uh, I was one of the first ones to go in and start making vineyard designated wines out of that block, is it's kind of uh, old school, traditional, ripens uh, maturity at a lower sugar level, say 24, mm -hmm. 24 and a half, I'm picking it, uh, not turning the wine into you know raisins, right. uh, making that over the top you know uh, wine. So it's more old school, very refined, uh, but, you know, bold in itself. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a wine that I really like, and uh, I think the 2008 is one of the best that I've done uh, from that block. Cool. And then the last one you had was a reserve? Um, yeah, so last year I started uh, making a reserve. So in uh, 16 years of making wines in Washington, I never really made any reserve wines. And I thought that I had found the vineyards to put together to start making reserve quality wines. And uh, this will be my second release of 2008. Um, this is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and Carmenere. And it's taking uh, basically my three favorite vineyards, the Finney Hill Vineyard, which is in the Horse Seven Hills, uh, right by Shampoo Vineyard, uh, the Upland Vineyard, and then the Lawrence Vineyard um, in the Royal City area. Combining those in different amounts to showcase what I believe is the best of the best of what I did for the vintage. Um, Take us through a little bit of the blending process for that reserve. Like, how do you decide how much of the Cab and how much of the Petit Verdot, for example, and, and the Malbec and the Carbonara? How do you know what percentages to blend to get the results that you're looking for? Yeah, so, you know, we, we've talked about this a lot, but I, I consider myself an artist. I really think that, you know, winemaking is an art form, and, and blending specifically is definitely an art form. It's amazing what 1% uh, to half a percent will change the overall um, dynamic of the blend. Um, but as a winemaker that's really involved, my blend started in my head, you know, way ahead of time, um, even before we picked the grapes. So originally when I started, I wanted a blend that was Cabernet Dominant, followed by Petit Verdot. So that was my basis. 
And then once the grapes are inside, over a two year, two and a half year period, depending on how long I'm aging, um, I age that, that blend sometimes up to 32 months in barrel. Um, I just will spend as much time as I can tweaking the blend, um, going through each of those lots at different amounts um, to get really what I'm looking for in the finished product. So it's very, uh, you know, passionate, about a three year, three year plan to get to where I'm putting it into bottle. Do you think, do you, do you see yourself ever um, sort of some fruit out of Walla Walla? You know, uh, I've made wines from Walla Walla. Uh, uh -huh. I work with Skylight Winery that's out of Walla Walla and we're sourcing from, some fruit from there. Uh, if I did, it would probably be Syrah. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the Syrahs that are coming out of there. And, uh, Seven Hills area? Or? Yeah, Seven Hills or even more. You know, I've been bugging Christophe Ferron for quite a uh -huh. while for my Almaterra project. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to work with him for, you know, three vintages when we were at Pepper Bridge. And that's kind of an area that I'd really concentrate on is somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, I, love, I love the Syrahs coming out of Seven Hills too. Yeah. So, well, just that, even that whole Milton free water, there's some really nice vineyards yeah, I, down there. I, mean, I love that area. I'm, I'm fortunate that I keep getting making wines, you know, from Walla Walla and, uh, and maybe maybe somewhere, you know, but, you know, I've kind of settled into three or four vineyards that I really like working with right now. Do you see yourself ever going to an estate vineyard soon? Um, as far as uh, me having my own vineyards? Or, you know, buying an, into a vineyard so you can call it an estate on the bottle um, or, you know. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, you know, I work with Upland Vineyard, um, Upland Estates, so that's a 100% uh, estate winery, so I have that dynamic and, you know, I don't see not making wines for them for a long time, um, so I do have that estate um, bottling there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as myself, I in my wines, I mean, I love to play around so much. I'm always exploring. Um, I have brought on a fourth vineyard in the last couple of years. I haven't produced any wines out of there. Um, what vineyard is that? Uh, Bear High Vineyard. Okay. And it's a uh, cool site, cool, cool site, 100% uh, Malbec is what I'm getting out of there. And I'm going to be coming out with uh, vineyard designated Malbec. Um, I've been using that Malbec for several years in the Skylight wines that have been doing really well. Uh -huh. And basically anytime anyone would give up, um, some tonnage or acres inside that vineyard, I've been gobbling them up because it's such a good novel site. So you've worked extensively, obviously clearly with the Yakima Valley and some out of Horse Heaven Hills. How often do you get a chance to uh, sample fruit out of uh, Sagemore, for example? Um, north of the Tri-Cities, you know, that area, and then also maybe the Waluk Slope. Yeah, you know, there's, that's the, the, the trouble about making wines in Washington. I mean, I, I would not make wines in any other place in the world, and that's because we have endless amount of freedom to what we can make and vineyard sources and varietals. Um, we used to make wine out of uh, Sagemore when I was at the Cubby Run, uh -huh. so I've had experience with that. Um, there's some, some uh, wineries are producing some great things out of that vineyard. You know, it's old. So, um, it, it's and really they run a really good vineyard, own. too. Yeah, it's a really I mean, good vineyard. Uh, I think yeah. it's really coming into its own as far as its age. Um, it's just a matter you can only work with so many different, you know, vineyards. And I've kind of, you know, picked the ones that I like based on, off of experience and uh, really what they could do. Those, those vineyards, like, take, for example, this year, um, Snipes Mountain was not touched by any freeze. The original vines from 1917 have never been froze out, um, so it's a very protected site for me. I feel really comfortable year in, year out. Uh, Finney Hill was um, about to normal crop, where across the road at Shampoo, I know there was some damage, you know, yep. again protected. And the Lawrence Vineyard that I have been using in the past, the same way, uh, very high elevation, and, uh, you get very protected site as well. So there, there, there's other reasons besides, I think, the quality of fruit. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I always like to explore and find new vineyards. And, there's actually uh, quite a few wineries I can think of that actually claim Lawrence as their estate fruit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they've kind of bought into it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, some really nice sites out there for sure. Yeah. Um, have you had a chance to experiment at all with some of the whites coming out of the Ancient Lakes region? You know, I have been. Uh, I, was, I was rather disappointed this year. I had been uh, making... Um, uh, Viognier from Evergreen Vineyard. Love that vineyard. Love that vineyard. I love the Viognier from there. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Milbrands have decided to remove the Viognier from, from that vineyard. Huh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's, I, I just, you know, that soil there is so unique. And the, um, when I taste that Viognier, 
from that vintage, I could taste that minerality, that chalkiness that I love. And, uh, you know, it's just something. But that is an area that if I was making a lot more whites, yeah. and uh, super high-end whites, I think, I would definitely concentrate on that area. Cool. So these releases, get back to your re three releases here. Um, just can you real quickly recap the blend and the reserve? Um, so the blend and the reserve is Dominic Cabernet at 67%. Right. And then it's followed up uh, off the top of my head, like 21 or 22% Petit Verdot. Okay. And then about 10% Malbec and the rest coming there. That one's uh, a little bit pricier, right? About 115 a bottle? Yeah, it's about 110, I think is where we price it okay. this year. Um, so my wine club gets it for, um, on the initial release, at a futures price. And then after that, it goes up to 110. Um, it is pricey, but I think with the amount of wines I'm making and, uh, and the effort I'm putting into that wine, it's definitely worth it. It's, I'm not making a lot of it. It's more of uh, a wine for my followers to, you know, be allowed to to taste it right. and share it with friends. Um, but, you know, my my effort is still concentrated in that that middle range with my Smasy Cellars. What do you What do you see the aging potential for that reserve to be? Oh, uh, that that wine's gonna lay around for a long time. You know, uh, last night I, I brought out some of my 2003. Um, red blend that I made originally when I first started Smancy Cellars and you know I still think that wine has five or six years to really come around to where it's going to be. We also tasted the 05 Cabernet last night and the 04 um, both I think just really coming around so the aging potential on this wine is uh, definitely good. So on the reserve you, you think an easy 15 to 25 years? I, I would say so. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So well dude we look forward to Keeping up with you. I mean, you guys, you're a busy guy. Oh yeah, definitely. It's great to see you. It's been a little while, you know. Yeah. It's, it's been a great year for me, uh, um, both locally, you know, in, in the Northwest and nationally with, with acclaim and recognition. And I just keep looking forward to, uh, you know, what doing doing what I love to do. And just gotta keep doing what you do. Wine, so. Yeah. Cheers.